hey guys, here is the whole topic summary for AQA Biology Bio Energetics. Now if you want to get a checklist so we can go through together, make sure you know everything, you can get that in the free revision guide over my website or you can get that off Amazon. Photosynthesis is going to take water, carbon dioxide, and turn it into oxygen and glucose. We can take light and we can put it above the equation, but do not put it in the equation because it is not a reactant. It's just a condition that's needed. You also need to know the symbols for these. So water is H2O plus carbon dioxide, which is CO2. Goes to oxygen, O2 plus glucose, which is C6H12O6. This needs to be balanced, but this is a nice easy one to balance because it is 666. So you can just remember that it's 666. And when you're writing out your formula, make sure your numbers are little and are in the correct place. Because if you write this, that's wrong, that's wrong, and you will lose the marks. In photosynthesis, we are taking energy from here, we're taking energy from light, and we are locking it up in glucose. This is an endo thermic reaction. It takes in energy. There are certain requirements for photosynthesis. First of all, we are going to need chlorophyll. That is our green pigment in leaves. We're going to need water and carbon dioxide because they are our reactants and then we're going to need sunlight. And the levels of these can greatly affect how much photosynthesis takes place. The rate of photosynthesis is going to depend on the percentage level of carbon dioxide. As the percentage level of carbon dioxide increases, so the rate of photosynthesis is going to increase, but only up to a point. After this point, there are going to be other limiting factors. Past this point, we need to increase something like the water, the light, or the temperature if we want more photosynthesis to take place. We could easily switch this out to be percentage level of water, and the graph would look the same. Light intensity is important for the rate of photosynthesis. When it is nighttime, when it is dark, we do not have a lot of photosynthesis going on. As we get further through the day, as we get more light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis will increase until we get to a point where it is no longer the limiting factor and other things like the reactants or temperature need to be increased. After this point, we need to think about increasing other things. Now, even though the graph is flat here, it looks like it might have stopped. It hasn't. There is still a steady rate of photosynthesis. It's just not increasing as much as it was down here. It's just a steady rate. When plants are very, very cold, everything acts very, very slowly. Not a lot happens. It slowly increases until nice points where the enzymes are happy and there's lots and lots of photosynthesis going on until it gets too hot and they start to be denatured and then the rate will fall off very rapidly. So we have our rate of reaction increasing the temperature and our optimal temperature and our enzymes getting denatured. It's really important that you remember that the enzymes are denatured, they are not killed, they are denatured. The actual um, rate of photosynthesis that takes place is much more complicated than depending on just one thing. It's going to depend on lots of different things all at once. The glucose from photosynthesis is going to be stored as starch. The most obvious example of starch is going to be Potatoes. For respiration, we are going to take 
glue case, add it to oxygen and come out with water and carbon dioxide. You need to know the symbols for these, so oxygen is O2, water, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2, and glucose, C6H12O6. This needs to be balanced, but it's a nice easy one. Six, six, six. You have to make sure your numbers are the right size and in the right place. So these ones need to be little numbers and these ones need to be big numbers. Respiration is an exo thermic reaction, which means energy is given out. The best example we can see of respiration is Screaming Jelly Baby demo, where we take potassium chlorate, that's our liquid oxygen, add in our glucose, that's our jelly baby, and you can see the massive amount of energy that comes off it. Anaerobic means without oxygen. So for anaerobic respiration, we take glucose and we turn it into energy and lactic acid. Not as much energy as aerobic respiration. Because the glucose isn't fully broken down. The lactic acid is going to build up in muscles. Causing an oxygen debt. This build up is going to be quite painful, so you'll get it when you're doing things like sprinting um, or when you've run out of oxygen. So, after you've finished um, sprinting, after you've finished wanting to get rid of this oxygen debt, you're going to need to breathe really, really hard. That's why you, you, you pant. You keep breathing hard after you're running to pay back this oxygen debt to get the blood flowing to remove the lactic acid from your muscles. Anaerobic respiration can also take place in yeast. So yeast will take the glucose and will convert it into carbon dioxide. and ethanol. Ethanol is used in drinks and cleaning products and carbon dioxide is used for a variety of things but when we talk about uh, in context of yeast that is what's going to make your cakes or your bread rise. Metabolism is the rate that chemical reactions take place in your body. For example, glucose being turned into starch, cellulose, or glycogen. Fatty acids and glycerol being turned into lipids. Amino acids being made into proteins. Glucose and nitrate ions forming amino acids, proteins breaking down to form urea, and all of this is going to involve energy. The energy is going to come from respiration involving glucose, that's going to take place in the mitochondria of our cells, 
Amino acids, they're important for building proteins. Proteins make up all of our hormones, all of our enzymes. These are the bits that actually carry out all of the reactions within our body. Lipids are important for maintaining um, our cell structure and for storing energy. 